Hi everyone, it's Arshal Ahi, and in today's session, we're talking about motivated sellers. How do we find them? Where do we find them? How do we really know if they're motivated? And these are the key points that we're gonna be covering in today's session. So before we do that, I wanna say a quick hello uh, to all new subscribers, new and old. So if you've been with me a while, hopefully you're enjoying the sessions, hopefully you're enjoying the, uh, the topics that I'm covering. And if there is a topic that you want me to cover, please list it below and I'll see if I can do a quick video on it. If you're completely new to the channel, welcome. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Please feel free to press the subscribe and the notifi notification bell below. Uh, and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. So, let's address motivated sellers. What is a motivated seller? A motivated seller is basically is someone who is motivated to sell. Very simple as that, it doesn't need to be rocket science. So with a motivated seller, they may have a number of reasons as to why they're motivated. It's now our job as property investors, deal sources, deal traders, uh, whatever you want to call yourself, to find out what the motivation is. Because motivation comes in lots of different forms. Have you ever considered that a motivated seller may be because they're upscaling, they're downscaling, they're emigrating, they've got financial hardship, they've got relationship hardship, relationship issues, and these are all the things that are potentially making them a motivated seller. So it's not necessarily all money related. So it's not always necessarily a case that they can afford to accept a 25% below market value offer. And I've been there, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, trading property. And I can say that in all the years that I've been doing it, there's very few cases that are actually in financial hardship. Now, this may change as a result of COVID-19, that we're gonna see lots, uh, lots more people become uh, being made redundant, we're gonna see lots more people who are gonna to struggle to be able to pay their mortgage and also some of their outgoings as a result of the higher unemployment, uh, not being able to afford to pay their mortgage, probably not being able to, to afford some of their other living costs as well. So they, we will start to see more motivated sellers and this will also become in the form of not only just homeowners but also property investors. How many property investors do you know that also own commercial properties and as a result of them now not having a commercial tenant in place? And I'll give you an example, over the road to my office, there's actually quite a large Barclays building. Now that Barclays building has been there from, from literally since the day that I can remember. Now, all of a sudden, uh, just before COVID, they emptied or they exited that building. Now, that, that building has been sat there empty the best part of a year now, and nothing's happened to it. During that time, there are going to be outgoings. There are going to be potentially mortgage, business rates, uh, water rates, electricity. So all these standing charges, these are all things that the landlord will have to pay or the owner will have to pay, regardless whether the property is uh, unoccupied or occupied. So moving on, what does a motivated seller look like? Comes in many forms. As I said, the majority of the cases that I come across are those that are going through relationship issues. And one of the things that you'll find probably actually with COVID and lockdown, they saw a massive rise in divorce cases. They saw massive rises. So if you have a look at the court systems nowadays, it is literally case in case of divorce, uh, divorce cases. And so therefore, all the people that just imagine Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the only thing that's holding them together is this one property that they own. They've probably put it on the market. They've not had much luck. And as a result, this now become the only thing that's holding them together. So therefore, they may become a motivated seller. All depends on how much leverage or how much lending they've got on the property. Now, Motivation, as I said, comes in many forms. Now, I once was a motivated seller on my own personal residential dwelling. So when I was looking to move, uh, I was upscaling, and as a result, the property that I was in, I wanted to sell that property. I didn't need to sell it. I wanted to sell it so that I could use the equity out of that to fund the new purchase. And as a result, I took a slight discount on the fact that I just wanted to move. Now I'm not, I wasn't in financial hardship or was it in any difficulty. I wanted it just so that I knew that that property, it wasn't really a, a property that I could rent out. I could have very easily just rented it, but it wasn't the right style of property. Probably a bit of an emotional attachment to it as well. So 
that wasn't something that I really wanted to do. So when, or when I look at the cases, I always look at what is the pain and what is the motivation. I always look at the root of the problem. And I look at where is, what is the vendor looking to achieve and will me giving them a below market value deal be the best solution for them and also me? Naturally, getting a property below market value is always going to be a win for me, but it may not be the best win for them. So I'm looking to create that win-win scenario. So if a property, let's just imagine, uh, is worth £100,000 and I'm offering them circa seventy to 75000 can they afford to accept that? Now they'll have to look at their leverage, they'll have to look at how much lending they've got on the property, they'll have to have a look at all the other outgoings that they've got. Can they afford to sell it me at that? Do they want to sell it me at that? Are there other ways that we can angle it so that we can structure a better deal for them? And this is where, I've always said this, that the most creative will be the most successful. So we start looking at all the other strategies. Could we run it as almost something like a lease option? Could we do an exchange of delay completion? Could it become a rent to rent? Whatever it may be, but you will only be able to answer those questions once you've got to the root of the problem. Now, giving you an example, if someone's currently going through some uh, relationship issues and the property is the only thing that's holding them together, they may not want a lease option because whilst they've got that, pro uh, whilst they're leasing it to you, they're still owning it jointly, which means that Mr. and Mrs. Smith can't go their separate ways. So naturally, something like that, it may be that a below market value deal may be the best solution for them. They may decide to take a discount on the fact that Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. And Mrs. Smith can actually go their separate ways. So look at the issue. Don't worry about the property. Look at the issue solve the problem and if you solve the problem there's a very good chance that you're going to be able to do a deal with the owner and understand what is the pain and the motivation behind uh behind the property so it's just a short video today don't chase the money i always say this don't chase the money if you have a look at the problem and try and solve the problem the solution will come out in itself and as a result, you'll be able to monetize that lead somehow or another. I always say as well is that when you're looking at the lead, look at it from two points of view. Could you invest in it yourself? Is this something that you'd want to do? And if it's not something that you don't, if it's not something for you, it doesn't fit your portfolio criteria, what do you do with it? Do you just say, sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I can't help you. Now, here's an opportunity for you. If you've got a property that you've been to look at and it didn't fit your criteria and you've not done anything, you've actually left money on the table. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to work with me. If you've got a deal, believe it or not, I've got the platform for it so that we can sell that deal. You should be looking to monetize every lead that you come into. Look at it from a point of view, is it for me? If it's not for me, can I sell it on to someone else? Can I sell that lead on to someone else? There's lots of people that will think, well, if I wouldn't buy it, why would someone else? We've got to remove that mentality because when it comes to deal sourcing, we've got to work on the basis that every investor has their own criteria. Every investor has their own parameter, their investing parameters. Some people will accept a single letter. Some people will not want a single let and they'll only want a multi-let. Some people won't want to do a HMO and will want to do service accommodation. Some people will only want lease options. Some people will only want rent to rent. Some people may not have the funds to invest in a property, so therefore will want to rent to rent. Have you ever thought of all the different kinds of parameters? Think about this on a day-to-day -day basis. All different kinds of businesses cater for all different kinds of clientele. Now you as a property investor have to do exactly the same. If you see a property and you've been and viewed it and you liked it, but you thought maybe it doesn't fit in with my criteria, why don't you package it? Why don't you sell it? Now, here's the opportunity. I want you to send me the details of that property or you can email us at deals at propertyinvestorapp.co.uk. So that is deals at propertyinvestorapp.co.uk. We'll then appraise it, we'll have a look at it together, we'll see if there's some kind of mileage in it, and we can package it and we can sell it, we can generate a fee from that deal. You now have made money from a deal 
that you may not have been looking to monetize previously, but now you can, will work with you. So hopefully that's give you something to think about. Think, well, hang on, how many deals have I looked at this year? How many deals did I look at, but I didn't do anything with? And as a result, let's see what we can do to make this and move this forward so that you're actually generating money from leads that you don't action yourself. So as I said, a shorter video than usual. Uh, as always, you can feel free to contact me on social media. So I am on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter under the name Arshilahi. If you like more free education and you want more free knowledge, feel free to download or um, go and check out my podcast. It's called The Property Rebel. We release a new episode every Tuesday and it's on all things property and all things uh, business related. So if you like the thought of that, go to uh, Apple Podcasts, you can go to Google Podcasts, you can check us out on Spotify. I think we're on um, a few of the platforms as well. So if you go into Google and type in the Property Rebel, you'll see uh, that it's dotted all over the place. Finally, I'm the owner and founder of the Property Investor app. It's the UK's first property investment marketplace which showcases all kinds of deals all over the UK, whether it be below market value deals, rent to rent deals, lease option deals, service accommodation deals, um, commercial to residential deals, uh, land with planning, um, large commercial buildings, industrial buildings, and land in general. So if you like the thought of any of those opportunities and you're looking for your next deal, why don't you download the app? Even if you're just being a window shopper, download the app. It's completely free to do. It takes two minutes to uh, download and register and you can see all the deals in the palm of your hand. It really is as simple as that. So all you gotta do, you can either go to a website and go to www.propertyinvestorapp.co.uk Failing that, you can go to the App Store on your phone. So if you've got an Apple phone, go to the App Store. If you've got an Android phone, go to the Google Play Store and type in Property Investor. It's there for you, literally takes two minutes to register and everything is there for you. So on that note, guys, as always, if you've got any questions, list them below. If there's some videos that you want me to, or is there any specific topics that you want me to cover over the next few sessions, list them below and I'll comment and I'll create some videos for you. On that note, I wish you all to be safe, well, and I look forward to you speaking. I look forward to speaking to you all very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.